In this lecture, we're going to have a closer look at the this keyword in JavaScript. This is one of those features that confuses a lot of developers, but honestly, I think it's because of the poor teaching materials out there, because I personally was confused about the this keyword for a long time. So in this lecture, I'm going to make it super simple for you, so you can explain it to your seven-year-old brother. So what is this? This references the object that is executing the current function. Here, I'm going to give you a very simple rule of thumb. If that function is part of an object, we call that function a method, right? So if that function is a method in an object, this references that object itself. Otherwise, if that function is a regular function, which means it's not part of an object, this references the global object, which is the window object in browsers and global in node. Let's take a look at a few examples. So I'm going to start by creating a video object. In this object, we're going to have a title property and a play method. Let's log this here and finally call video.play. Save the changes so we get our video object on the console. So in this example, because play is a method in the video object, this references this object itself. By the same token, we can add a method later in this object and we'll get the same result. For example, we can add a stop method here, set it to a function, and here we can do console.log of this. If we call the stop method, once again, we're going to see the video object on the console. So save the changes, and here is our video object. Because again, stop is a method in the video object. So that's an example of the first rule. Now let's take a look at an example of the second rule, a regular function. So let's delete this and instead add a function called play video. If we log this on the console, we're going to see the global object, which is window in browsers and global in node. So let's call this function play video and save the changes so we get the window object here. Now, what if this is a constructor function? We call the constructor functions using the new operator. So let's rename play video to video with a capital V. That's the convention for constructor functions. Now here we're going to pass a title property and set this the title to title. Now we can use this constructor function to create a new video object. So we use the new operator, save the changes. Oops, I forgot to pass a title here. That's the title. So what do we get here? Instead of the window object, we get a new object. Now note that this object is not this video object here. It's completely separate. To demonstrate this, I'm going to change this argument to B. So instead of the window object, we get this video object. Because earlier in the course, I told you that when you use the new operator, this new operator creates a new empty object like this and sets this in this constructor function to point to this empty object. So here on line 12, we add the title property to this new object. So let's recap. When dealing with a regular function, this by default references the global object but if you call a function using the new operator, which is the case for constructor functions, this will reference a new empty object. Now, the last example. I'm going to clean up this code. Let's add another property in this object, tags. We set it to an array of three strings. Now, let's rename the play method to show tags. So here we can use this to get the current object and then get the tags property. Because this is an array, we can call the for each method. And here we need to pass a callback function. So function. In each iteration, this function will get a tag. And then we can display the tag on the console. So console.log of tag. Finally, let's call video.show tags. Save the changes. So we get A, B, C. Beautiful. But what if we want to display the title of the video next to each tag? Well, 
we can add this, the title here, save the changes. Look at undefined. What's going on here? Well, let's remove the title property and see what this is referencing. Save the changes. It's referencing the window object. But aren't we inside a video object here? Shouldn't this reference the video object? No, because here we are inside this callback function. This function is just a regular function. It's not a method in the video object. The only method we have here is show tags. So because this is a regular function, this references the global object. So it's the global object that is executing this anonymous callback function. But how can we solve this problem and display the title of the video next to each tag? Well, we have a few different solutions for this. In this particular case, the for each method has two parameters. The first parameter is our callback function. The second parameter is this arg. So we can pass an object here and this will reference that object. For example, here I can pass a new object with a first name set to mosh. Now, when we save the changes, you can see this is referencing this new object. Now, in this example, we don't really want this object. We want our video object. So we can pass this here. Because at this point, we are in the show tags method. So this references the current object. So here we are not inside of a callback function. We are still in the execution context of the show tags method. So now if we save the changes, next to each tag, we can see our video object with this title property. So we can add the title property here. And with this, we see the title of the video next to each tag. Beautiful. But not all methods in JavaScript give you the ability to pass the this argument. So we have a few different solutions for that. And that's the topic for the next lecture. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.